Here are six common mistakes when animating logos and what to do instead. Let's start with the worst mistake, butchering the logo. What I mean is that once the logo animates in, it should be pixel perfect compared to the original logo down to every color, curve, corner, etc. When animating a logo, you may need to recreate parts of it in order to animate it. Or you may use masks to animate the logo revealing. If you're not careful, a corner could be clipped or a layer could be bumped. To check to make sure everything is looking correct, make sure to save a fresh, undisturbed version of the logo. Then import that and overlay it on the finished state of your animated logo to use as a reference to make sure everything is lined up. You can set the blending mode on the original logo to difference to highlight any inconsistencies. The next mistake is making the logo animation too slow and or too long. A logo animation should last about 3 to 10 seconds. If it just animates in, it should be shorter, closer to 3 seconds, versus if it animates in and out, it should be longer, closer to 10 seconds, to allow time to pause in the middle so viewers can see the full logo. The goal of a logo animation is to catch the viewer's attention and convey what the logo stands for in the shortest amount of time possible. A logo animation should be snappy. The last thing you want to do is annoy or frustrate your customers by making them watch a slow or predictable animation before they can get on with what they're trying to do. Mistake number three is using the whole frame. It might be tempting to animate a logo reveal by having elements of the logo fly in from off screen. But before you do this, consider all of the use cases for the logo animation. If the screen size changes or the aspect ratio, you'll have to figure out a way to account for this. Making a bunch of different versions could be a real pain. It definitely looks unprofessional to have raw edges shown where artwork is cut off in an awkward way, even if it's just for a split second. You'll also run into similar problems if you have the whole screen change colors like this example. I'm not saying it's bad to animate a logo like this, I'm just saying that before you do, you should consider all of the different use cases for your logo animation. If you need to make different versions for different screen sizes or aspect ratios, that could be a real headache. Instead, I'd recommend having your entire logo animation contained within a relatively small area like this. Mistake number four is using mismatching elements in your logo animation. When animating a logo, you may want to incorporate new elements that are not in the actual logo design. These could be simple things like shapes, lines, or smears, or they could be completely new icons or illustrations. Either way, anything in your logo animation should be on brand. Be sure all colors are within the brand's color palette, the level of detail is consistent, including things like line thickness, and that the overall style is consistent. If you didn't design the logo, but choose to make your own icons to incorporate into the animation, be extra careful that they match the style of the logo. If you can, consult with the logo designer either to have them design the icons or to make sure that the ones that you designed fit. Mistake number five is not obeying the laws of physics. When things fall, gravity accelerates them towards the ground. So don't just easy ease those keyframes. The object will slow down before landing, which will look wrong because it is. Instead, you'll need to go into the graph editor to adjust the motion curve. When an object is tossed in the air, it usually moves in the shape of an arc. The motion should start off fast because of whatever force launched it into the air, even if that thing is imaginary. Then at the highest point, the object should slow down, but not stop, so the speed should never reach zero. As the object falls, gravity accelerates it towards the ground. Again, you'll need to go into the graph editor to create this motion curve. Bouncing will also require obeying the laws of physics. If the graph editor scares you, check out my class Smooth Moves to learn everything you need to know about creating realistic motion in After Effects. The last mistake is lacking rhythm or flow. A logo animation can be a simple reveal that starts slow, speeds up, and ends slow. Or it could have a few segments or scenes that create a rhythm. Look at the difference between these two animations. The one on the left uses all linear keyframes and everything animates in at the same time. For the one on the right, the keyframes are not linear, they've been adjusted in the graph editor to give each element a custom motion curve. And the timing of when each element comes in is staggered. This logo is a lot more interesting and satisfying to watch. But actually, this logo animation could be even better if we incorporate a few principles of animation. Now look at the difference between the boring, linear first version, the second, improved flow version, and the final version that uses principles of animation too. 
If you want to learn exactly how to level up your logo animations like this and to master the principles of animation that can be applied to any motion design project, then check out my class, Bring a Logo to Life, Principles of Animation for Motion Designers. Here's the class trailer and a link to learn more.